That old dusty trail down south, it ain't for the faint of heart. You best keep your eyes peeled for fires and critters alike. This has just made things exponentially more complicated. Well, if those don't seem to get you, that canyon just might. This canyon is so remote. I didn't even see footprints coming down. Son, but let me tell you, find a way to survive, and a man can make a mighty fine them. Painting up some of the prettiest gems the Southwest has to offer. This could not be going any better. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Gila. Alrighty, this is one heavy pack, but I ain't no slouch. We have packed, practiced many, many a time, and I think we are right at weight. Everything I might need and then some to get us through this adventure. But we'll go over what's in the bag a little bit later. For now, let's uh, go to sleep. We got a long drive. And first of many travel montages, take one. I think this is a, a As we're cutting through this big open desert section, I'm realizing this drive is a lot longer than I thought. We are just about halfway and hopefully we can get there soon. Let's keep on trucking, baby. Let's go. Well, my worst fear has uh, just uh, come true. There is a massive fire up the Gila, the West Fork, the one I was trying to go to. And now it's time for a plan B, five hours later. Woohoo! let's go, yes! Let's try this again. What a ridiculous start to this trip. I am so glad to be out of this damn truck and on whew, some flat ground. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I tell you, we got a couple things we're gonna do before we get at the trail. So let's get on with that and yeah, let's start this adventure, man. Let's go. been sitting in a car for too long. Last but not least, the insurance policy so they can at least maybe track down my body if and when things go wrong. It's really nice to see that there's no fires on this side of the Gila. I was driving in this morning, man, it was kind of kind of freaky, reminded me of Idaho a lot. It had fire departments from Wyoming, Idaho, Montana, everybody was coming to the party to put out some fires, which is always good to see. So hopefully that side goes out soon and we can go hit the West Fork sometime. That'd be ideal. <laughs> so in the meantime, fingers crossed, white water's the ticket, fingers crossed. I'm not quite sure how far we just hiked down. All I know is that we hiked down a buttload. That hike up is gonna be nasty. The elevation drop has been nothing but drop the entire time. So, oh God, future self is gonna be hating this. But yeah, I can hear the river. I don't know if you guys can. That, that is Whitewater Creek right there, baby. That's it, folks. That is it. Well, I think we might've just found 
the flattest piece of real estate in the entire canyon. Let's go. That is going to be home for the next few days. Now, this isn't exactly level, but this is probably the best spot we're going to find here for a while. The canyon is so steep on either end. I think we need to take this and, and run with it. This is, this is good. So I'm going to clear this up first before we put our tent down. You gotta always have the sleeping pad, especially on ground like this. Well, it ain't Shangri-La, but it's gonna have to work. This will be our home in the Gila for the next two days. You know what? I'm not, uh, I'm not too picky, so I don't mind. But I think. I'm gonna take a quick siesta. It's been, believe it or not, it's been a long day. <laughs> I'm gonna lay down while the sun's still high in the sky, try and catch a few Z's before we catch a few G's. I cannot tell you how good laying down felt. That was amazing. Just a few more things we gotta take care of before we can actually go and do some fishing. First off, I'm going to hang my bear bells. This is a little uh, paracord setup that I made. Just gonna put it around the perimeter, helps me hear a little something different, maybe uh, a sound not in nature. So if anything were to get into my perimeter, I'll be able to hear it and have a better idea which way they're coming from before I gotta give them the sauce. It's funny how something just as simple as a couple bells on some paracord can make you feel a lot more secure. When you can hear them, you know, breaks up the natural noises like the wind and the river you hear that, you're like, what in the world is that? Hopefully the wind doesn't set it off tonight. That would be a mega, mega downer, get me super spooked for nothing. But I think it's a good system regardless. And going off of that, we need to do a couple more things to, uh, yeah, get ready for this evening bite. First thing is we gotta go hang our bear bag. New Mexico is not known for its crazy population of black bears, but they're still here, still roaming around, and you don't wanna risk it. I certainly don't wanna risk it. So I'm gonna get this out, find a nice tree to hang it in, and uh, yeah, keep our dinner nice and safe away from those bears. And then, and then after that, all we gotta do is pack up our bag and head to the stream, see what we can't find. We got some neighbors, that's pretty cool. That was a big old lizard, whatever that was, dang. You always gotta try and find that medium ground, not too far away from your camp, but just far enough to hang up your food bag so those bears stay away, and I'll tell you, Kind of hard to find a good tree. I think this one might be our best. We're gonna give it a couple tossy tosses and see if we can't <laughs> get this bad boy up there. Nice. There's our camp. There's our bear bag. Not too far away, but just far enough. Oh, oh, oh! That's a fish, folks! That's a fish! It's by no means a giant, but that, ladies and gentlemen, is a Gila trout. Oh my lanta. All the planning, all the prepping, all the monkey wrenches thrown at our way, that little fish right there, that is what makes it worth it. That is New Mexico, the Gila trout. That is my first official Gila trout here in the great state of New Mexico and my first trout on my brand new ant. This beautiful piece of glass has just caught its first of hopefully many, many fish. And you know what that means. We gotta do the honors of Cutting off the plastic. Ooh, so fresh, so clean. Ooh, that's cold. That right there is a high country pot of gold. That is a money, money run. If there's gonna be big fish, I'm thinking they're gonna be in there. That was it, that was a nice fish. That's a better fish, let's go. Yeah! 
Yeah, let's go. That's a rafter. <laughs> Now that is much closer to the caliber of fish we're wanting out of here. That is so sick. On the dry, t I love high mountain fishing. This is the best. It is absolutely the best. Ah, oh, yes! Let's get him back. I know it's kind of loud right here, but this is what we got him on. It's a black and purple ant of some sort, and it, oh man, it got clobbered. I love to see that. Keep moving up, I bet there's some more. Yeah, there we go. Not as good as that last one, but still pretty nice fish. Yeah, he came up and gave that a real nice smack. Not a juvenile, but not a, uh, not a mondo, that's for sure. Beautiful nonetheless. Oh my gosh, these gila are something else. This could not be going any better. Oh my gosh, I cannot believe we're actually finding fish. Somebody's been here. Oh. Dang it! What I'm noticing is that these takes remind me so much of high country cutthroats in the streams. They come up, they marinate. They barely even grab it, grab it, and maybe they'll let it go, grab it again, and then go down. They take their sweet time. I'm having having trouble adjusting to the hook set. I'm used to those, those splashy, driftless browns, man. They come up, they don't hesitate, they smack it. Let me see if I can set you guys up for a better view of that. So oh, that was it, that was it. There it is, there it is. Easy, easy tub muffin. This little one was playing with me, man. What are you doing, where are your friends? Where are your big friends? All right, see you, sir. And he got him, tell ya. But do you see what I mean? Do you see how they were coming up and just kinda like, man, I might not take this one, I'll take the next one. And then go, oh, little rats, little, little rats. Yes! That's a much better fish. They're sitting right on this shadow, right where the sun meets the shadow. That's where I cast it. He blasted it. Man. That was that was super cool. And I saw some more chasing him too. Let's do one more cheeky gila, gila grip and grin on this guy. That is seriously so cool. Oh man, that was so cool. What was that? That was textbook. This evening, Gila Trout Bite is hot. They are not stopping, and I am I am all over it. I'm loving it. Check out that fin, that is intense. These are, these are just an incredible trout. Let's get it back. My Onyx backcountry is telling me there's a trail just up the ways. Only problem is, <laughs> I'm not seeing any trail. That looks nasty and steep. We might risk it for the biscuit, just it'll make getting back to camp a little bit easier, a little bit faster, and that way we know where we started for tomorrow. Because I'd like to pick up right where we left off. We seem to really be getting into the Gila action. This is just a taste tester. This is just an appetizer for the full send, which is going to be tomorrow. 
So yeah, let's uh, huck it back. We got a lot to do before we can lay our head down tonight. So come on, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> a, that's deep. Shale is slippery and very sharp. I got stuck good, ouch. We're uh, risking it for the biscuit and paying the price right now. Mm -mm -mm. Woohoo! and we are bandaged up. Good thing I don't have enough freaking liquid in my body to be bleeding all that much. Ay ay ay, this, this hill section's killing me. This doesn't suck, it's just, it's gonna be a little annoying. A little annoying throughout the rest of the trip, but eh, it's a cost of doing business, I suppose. I shouldn't be freaking sunning it up a uh, 45 degree, right? I should be smarter next time. And I think next time, I'm gonna take the creek. <laughs> Son of a bitch. That was a sketch level. Nine out of 10. But that view is a perfect 10. Diamond, diamond D. Wow. Didn't get much more healer than that. We're not out of the woods yet, but that was, that was super sketchy. I don't think I'll ever do that again. That was stupid and uh, yeah, that shell is loose and sliding, tumbling. Woo! That's scary, 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 scary. Well, let's keep going. Okay, we made it back to camp. Took a quick bath, gotta, gotta get the, the dirt and gunk off, but we're a little behind. That sun is uh, well on its way to yesteryear, and we've got, uh, we've got some things to do. Order of operations is key, though. I'm gonna start by getting all my camera equipment charging, then I'm gonna start on dinner, then I'm gonna do a more thorough bath, change, and then, hopefully, dinner will be ready by then, so let's get after it right now. You gotta love when the place is fully furnished. We've got a nice big old slab of rock here that we're gonna use as our kitchen table of sorts as we get our meal all prepped up. We're gonna do a little chicken teriyaki tonight with a warm orange and maybe a cliff bar if I'm feeling frisky afterwards. I'm still pretty new to this whole backpacking thing. But one thing I will suggest, anyone out there looking to get into backpacking, get yourself a jet boil. These things are no joke. The simplest, easiest ways to cook food, you know, boil water for coffee, whatever it is. Especially in a place like Fire Country, I'm literally I'm gonna be sleeping on a bed of tinder and one spark, psh, just like that, could set this whole section of the Gila blaze, like we saw earlier today. Yeah, get yourself a jet boil, they're the bomb. <laughs> no free shout outs, damn it! <laughs> you know, a lot of people talk badly about these freeze dried meals Mountain House, Prime Optimum Fuel, whatever, you know, whatever brand company it is. But you gotta understand, they, they just kinda are what they are. They're gonna be high in sodium, high in calories, and uh, yeah, they're gonna kinda taste like glue sometimes. But it, get, it kinda gives you the, the stuff you need when you're out here burning off all that we did today. And you know, think of all the salt and minerals we poured through our bodies, sweating our asses off in the <laughs> New Mexico heat. So, you gotta just kinda tape your expectations. I'm looking forward to it. I think it's gonna be really good. So let's get our boiled water in there. Oh yeah, baby. Here's another big hack when you're out in the backcountry. A little body wipe action. They come, again, in so many different brands, but just for the peace of mind, giving you the sense of, uh, you know, cleanliness before you go into the, the, the sleep realm is always nice, I like it. Again, these kind of are what they are. They're expensive for a one-time use, but when you're out here, especially after today, like I, you know, cut the hell out of my finger, I wanna have a nice clean body and be able to uh, rest up and recoup and get dirty again tomorrow. It is hard to put a value on fresh, dry clothes. This is, this is living large, folks. The, the, the chariot has come. Now, I still gotta let my, my food rest a little bit, so let's address this, this nasty cut. With a, with a little cut like this, I, I know, it's, it's, a, it's mostly a cut, but it's, it is pretty deep. Ooh, G. Manelli. Okay, uh, parental advisory warning. Yeah, you can kind of see it's a little deep. I'm downplaying it. It's it's a nasty cut, and I think it's always important to have some sort of first aid, some sort of medical supplies. I carry one in my fishing bag no matter where I am, let alone backpacking in the middle of flipping nowhere's canyon. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take out my 
kit, let's just call it, my med kit, and kind of go through some of the key items that's gonna really come into play when dressing this and, and kind of uh, getting it on the stages of healing and away from any bad juju. I know this may look like your everyday average Walmart first aid kit, but let me tell you, I've kind of pimped it out a little bit. First and foremost, Ace Athletic Tape is probably the best bandage out there. It is sticky and it'll, it'll wrap around damn near anything and you can put down pressure. And that's what I did with this. I put down pressure quick and as you can see, the bleeding stopped or I'm still dehydrated. Either one. <laughs> we've got the all important bag. And in here we've got skin glue, Neosporin, plenty, plenty of Tylenol. If you, you know, sprain or break an ankle out here, you could be really, really in trouble. We've got Benadryl for bites, and then also super glue, super glue. So that'd be perfect for this wound if the skin glue isn't stout enough. So what I'm gonna do tonight is I'm just gonna put some Neosporin on it and try and avoid busting that seal. I'm gonna sleep on it, see if I can't get it to kind of start in the way of healing, at least kill all the bad bacteria, because you know, I only gave it a little kissy kiss, got the blood out, you know, who knows what's in there. So that's what the Neosporin is for, and hopefully that'll do the job. And then tomorrow, we'll wrap it up real thorough probably skin glue it too, make sure it is sealed tight so we can adventure all the way up this canyon and catch all the Gila trout. <laughs> so sorry for that quick aside. I just think it's important to have in your, well, adventure kit, be it fishing, hiking, backpacking, whatever it is. So yeah, let's uh, get working on this and I think dinner might be ready soon. I'm, I'm freaking starved. Oh, oh. Now this, this is living large, folks. We got ourselves a beautiful backpacking meal, let me tell you. I'll be honest, it's a bit soupy. I put too much water in, and that's that's on me. I'm a bad chef. <laughs> but I'm so dang hungry right now, I could probably eat a horse and, and then some, so. Wow, oh my gosh. You can really taste the chicken. Looks like we got some peas, carrots, peppers, rice. Eh, a little, little crunchy, but we can deal. The chicken is really good, though. God damn. Mmm. I don't care what they say, Mountain House. 10 out of 10, chicken teriyaki. That's a winner in my book. <laughs> Tune in for more food reviews for Mike. If I'm being completely honest, sitting here in the Gila, eating a beautiful mountain house meal, it's kind of a surreal feeling for me. I'm sure there's a lot of you fishy folk out there who have spent just as much time daydreaming about all the different trout species or salmon species that you can target on the fly. And I think it goes without saying that the Gila trout, it's gotta be at the top of that list. Not only because of how rare the species is, or was, I should say, they're, they're coming back in, in quite, quite the numbers these days, but just how treacherous this landscape is. It's, it's amazing to think that a little trout can live in a place like this. And I think I'm gonna go over kind of the life history and maybe more of the uh, taxonomy of the Gila trout in the next video. But for now, I, I think I'm gonna cut it here. It's been a long day, trials and tribulations. By all seasons, always finding some stupid shit <laughs> to get myself into. <laughs> but I've got a mountain house meal to finish and a cliff bar, and I'm going to hit the sack. So all you OG subs, all you all you Drifus folks, all, all you folks on the Instagram, the Discord, YouTube, thank you so much for sticking around. Thank you so much for sticking around in the, the new environment I find myself in. It means a lot, and I really, really appreciate it. And, I hope that uh, maybe these videos can help you on your adventures, your endeavors one day, and yeah, give you a better idea of what to expect when coming to the Gila. So, with that being said, when you do find yourself deep in a canyon <laughs> in the Gila National Forest, make sure to keep your feet in the water. And until next time, folks, tight lines. Boy, I do not want to get trapped by a fire. That's starting to really spook me. 
Ladies and gentlemen, may I introduce you to the pool boss. My gosh, sir, you are tubby. Oh my goodness.